I'm here with David Heller, the new owner of the Lowell Spinners. And uh, David's been going uh, almost uh, coast to coast for the last couple of months. He owns five uh, uh, minor league franchises, but now he's down to four, and he says he's going to be anchored right here at the uh, East Coast. And uh, one of the big reasons is because of Lowell. So That's David, exactly right. What, what, what nice really, to see you. Thank you. And uh, what made you so keen on, uh, on buying the team from uh, Drew Weber? And, and obviously you liked what you saw. It, Lowell has a fabulous, passionate fan base. You, you have people who are so into the game, who care so much about baseball. It's much different than I've seen in, in other markets all over the country. Where, yeah, you, and here's how you tell. The other night we had a uh, we had a walk off double for a win. Last night we had a walk off pass ball for a win. The crowd was still the ballpark was still full. The crowd was still here. In the ninth inning. A lot of parks, they'll go away. You know, five, they'll come for five, they'll come for six, come for seven innings, mm -hmm. and they'll leave. Lowell, they stay to the end. And wow. I love that. That's a, that? That's a committed, passionate fan base. Perseverance for Lowell. <laughs> the Mill City. Oh, right. talking about the Mill City. The Mill City. Okay. Now, we've talked, we've had some discussions yes. earlier. We're going to let you in on a little secret here, okay? Dave is very energetic. He's got a lot of ideas. And one of the things he does, all his ballparks, he takes the best, he builds a best practice list, yeah. and you've already got some uh, ideas to, to kind of just, you know, re-energize the, the franchise, yeah. which is now going into its, what, uh, This is our 20th, 20th year. year. 20th, 20th year. 20th year. So tell us about the Mill City concept. So, Jim, what we want to do is have an alternate name for the team. We're going to call them the Mill City Spinners. And we're going to have a Mill City logo and a Mill City uniform and a Mill City cap. And, you know, it's not going to replace Lowell. We're still going to be the Lowell Spinners. But maybe one day a week or so, we'll be known as the Mill City team. And I think that's nice to pay homage to the heritage yeah, yeah. Of, of the city of Lowell and the, and the whole region, really, the whole Merrimack Valley. Dave has given me a, uh, a, a preliminary look at some of the, uh, the logos. I'll tell you, they're fantastic. They're really powerful. And they capture, I think, the, uh, the the true historic sense of the city and what we uh, what we're all about. I mean, those mills now have changed from booms to now there's entrepreneurs in there, venture capitalists, people living in the condos, mills, enjoying sure. the condos. So it's uh, I, 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 you'll have to read the Sun and take a look at it and tell me what you think about it. But David, tell me, how did you get this interest in minor league baseball? I mean, uh, you now own four teams. You yep. sold your Bakersfield franchise to stay anchored yes. to the East Coast and yes. stuff. But how did you originally get involved uh, in minor league baseball? Is it passion for baseball? I've uh, always loved family baseball. Family fun? And I've always loved baseball ever since I was a little kid. I've always loved baseball. And, uh, I remember when I was seven years old, I wanted so badly to be able to go to see a ball game. I was living in Connecticut at the time and uh, wanted to go see the Yankees or see the Mets. And my dad said to me, you want to go? He says, I'm happy to take you. Go out and earn the money for your ticket. Wow. And I went and I, and I sold garden seeds door to door, <laughs> put them on the basket of my old Schwinn one speed and went door to door in Connecticut selling uh, garden seeds to make enough money to be able to go see a game. And the first game my dad ever took me to, I saw Tom Seaver pitch a, pitch a one hitter, took you a no to hitter into the night. I went to Queens, I Queens. went to Flushing. Flushing, okay. See Tom Seaver, because he ended up with the Red Sox. He did, and the day he played, the first game he pitched for the Red Sox, I was, by that time, I was 24 years old and I'm working in Washington, D.C. And I, I packed up my my old beat up Honda Accord and drove all the way from D.C. up to Boston to be here that night at Fenway when Seaver pitched. All right, now, so so you grew up a Yankees fan? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. no. Okay. Stop Connecticut, that. Connecticut That's Yankees. blasphemous. Uh, are you just saying that? That's blasphemous. Right. Because uh, now no, you own a never. Uh, an affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. Yes. Okay. yes. So uh, tell the truth. Have you always been a Red Sox fan? I'm, I can't say that I've always been a Red Sox okay. fan. Uh, but I was never a Yankees fan. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you might own a Yankees franchise someday. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. <laughs> we got him on tape. My my first my first foray into baseball, I was partners with Don Mattingly and Cal Ripken. 
it, it, we were going to bring a team to Cal's, uh, pardon me, to Donnie's hometown of Evansville, Indiana. And Don and I are the same age, and we would go to the Chamber of Commerce and so on and meet people, and Don would say, Dave and I were seven years old, we each played baseball, I dreamt of being the first baseman for the Yankees, and Dave dreamt of owning them. <laughs> and I would say I recognized the limitations of my abilities even then. But Mattingly, Mattingly asked me, who was your favorite player growing up? And I said, my favorite was Tom Seaver. And he goes, you wanted a Met? He said, you liked a Met? And I said, I was never really that into the Yankees, to be truthful. Now, do you bat right or left? I bat right. Throw right? I throw right. Okay, so we got him on record for that. Yes. Good. Now, interesting thing about David, okay, he's not only a big a baseball fan, but he's also a fan of politics. He's also one of the top uh, political consultants to the Democratic Party. And uh, uh, David has uh, three degrees. He graduated Brown University in Providence, and he has master's degrees from Oxford and uh, also from Yale. So you know what? The guy's got some business experience. He's got some smarts here. So it's going to be interesting to see how he negotiates with city manager Kevin Murphy as we go along and to spin his work on our new lease. But you know what? I'll tell you, the nice thing about that is Kevin and, and I have the same goal in mind, which is how do we preserve baseball long term right here in Lowell and right here in Lowell Park. Yeah. And when Thank you have the same goals, the negotiations are always easier. Well, speaking of goals, I, I've already spoken to the city manager, and he is just uh, uh, he's just so uh, uh, impressed by your desire to improve uh, Lalasha Park, upgrade it, and bring a f more uh, uh, fun uh, family experience to, to, to everyone. Yes. And you said already that the welcoming mat, uh, the Lowellians you've met and, and from other communities yes. have been so great. It's Talk been a little a, about that. Oh, Jim, it's been amazing. I, I have, as you said, I've bought six minor league teams in my career and, and I have never had the kind of warm friendly welcome that I've anywhere that I've gotten here at Lowell and, and, and from Lawrence and Andover down to Burlington and Wilmington and, um, over to Tewksbury and up mm -hmm. to Nashua people from all over the Merrimack Valley have just been so friendly and so welcoming and it's it really energizes me and it makes me that much more determined to make this place really sing. What's the first the, the first question they ask you? When, when you meet someone yes. new who comes in through the, the turnstiles, what yes. do they ask you? Is the team gonna stay in Lowell? Really? That's the first question they oh, ask. Wait. There's no doubt about it. No that, doubt about right? it. I say I promise you it is. Good. Now, some of the goals or some of, some of the ideas you're thinking about mm -hmm. uh, here in Lowell uh, that you've seen it, uh, that you might like to incorporate into the into this ballpark yeah. that you've seen because Davenport has been voted the, the best the, ball, the best. best minor league b uh, baseball park in America. Yes. And if you see it, it has a lot of resemblance to La Lasha Park. It does. How do you talk about that? It does. It's interesting. If you. If you could look yeah. over there and and imagine looking over that right field fence and there were no trees, you would have this spectacular view of the river and this gorgeous multi-arch bridge. And that's exactly the same view that we have in the Quad Cities. Why they have this this tree line to block that view, I don't really understand that. Because it, it was built as a river a front ballpark or a right. view ballpark. Yes, and yeah. it's not. It's yeah. just now it just looks like a ballpark in the middle of the woods. So that would be one thing to give that more uh, uh, open experience, yes. right? I you mean, want people here? to see the river, sure. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's one of Lowell's biggest assets mm -hmm. is the river. Why would you hide it, right? Good you got, point. If, you, if, you're, if you're dating Miss America, right, you don't, you don't keep her in the living room. You bring her out. You take her out to restaurants. You want people to see her. That's we've got that we've got a gorgeous view here. We want people to see it. I love that analogy. You know? <laughs> what else? What, what else are you thinking about? So, what I want to do first and foremost here is I want to build group areas. There is no one space in the ballpark where you can bring a group of 40, 50, 70, 100 people and let them mix and mingle and hang out and get to know each other. Um, instead, you have to have them all seated yeah. together. And that's not really what minor league baseball should be about. It should be about people mixing and mingling and, and, and meeting each other and interacting and make it one big party. 
So how do you do that? How do you accomplish that? You you do one of two things. You either start ripping out these bleachers right at the top, and you can see here if we can walk over, Jim. You have half a dozen rows of bleachers behind the seats. You could either rip out the bleachers and just make a flat area, oh. or a tiered area where you put hi hat tables and chairs, and people can watch the game that way, um, or you simply expand. One of the things that I noticed right away is there's a lot of dead space in this park. And when the park is so pinned in, right, you can't, you can't go out to left field, you can't go out past the fence at right field because that's not the city's land, right? That's federal yes. land, we can't take it. Mm. And so when you're, and then you can't go the other way because of Pawtucket Street and then you've got the parking garage and over here you've got Aiken Street. So you're really pinned into this space. This is all you have. And when you are pinned in, you have to maximize the space you have, obviously. And so you look at the, at the end of the concourse on the right field side, there's a big dead area between there and the foul pole. All right, we're down here in the right field stands, and uh, Dave's going to show us some of the ideas, what he's thinking about, to add uh, uh, some new um, uh, space to the ballpark. So, Jim, if you look straight down that foul line, back to home plate, you see this is actually one of the best sight lines in the entire park, yeah. right here. And I want to take this sight line and extend it right from right here all the way out to that foul pole wow. and create a giant deck, a two-tiered deck that people could use to gather, to mill, to mix around. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you create that pesky pole effect. Exactly. Like I want people to be able to sign the pole just like at Fenway. Yeah, I think that would be really fun. Yeah, I mean, look at this. So uh, you get this view here, Chris, of this uh, space down here. Sure, uh, there's a lot of room here. This is and a lot of dead space. And then you say on the uh, so it'll be two decks. The lower deck would be like a uh, a birthday room. A birthday room. A birthday room in, for birthday parties for kids. Yeah. And we fill it with arcade games and video games. You know, uh, down the clown and skee ball and things like that. And some Xbox games. And uh, and then some video games. I think it would be really fun for kids. In the upper deck. And the upper deck would be an open area with high high top tables and chairs, where uh, families and and companies can go and have family reunions and company gatherings and just a big group space that mm. this park desperately needs. Well, I think it makes a lot of sense. And now you've got a Ferris wheel in yes. Davenport. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, how did that come about? Is, is, is that uh, with, uh, with you work with the city to we do did. that? We did. We partnered with the city on that. And we wanted something iconic that would attract people downtown. And the city bought into that vision and we teamed up together. I took out a million dollar loan and we uh, put in the Ferris wheel. Wow. And, you know, there was, a, there was some resentment. There was some opposition to it on city council. Um, but we got it done. And we've proven all the naysayers wrong. We had last year 84,000 people ride that Ferris wheel in a town of 95,000. Wow. And this year, we are on pace to clear north of 90 on that Ferris wheel. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and I have seen kids, I have seen, I have seen people from two-month-old infants to 100-year-old men Four generations of families ride that Ferris wheel together and they all come off smiling. So when do we get one in Lowell? <laughs> That'd be We're going to get something in Lowell. It's not going to be a Ferris you wheel. You already brought in uh, one ride. We brought in one small ride, yeah. yeah and there's more to Pirates come. Pirates of the Caribbean, a ship or something yes, like that? Yeah, the swinging yeah. pirate ship. So he's already started. I yes. mean, we're, we're already moving here in Lowell. And it's going to, uh, it's going to just keep changing uh, as... Um, as uh, David gets more and more involved in this ballpark, in this community. 
Um, and uh, we hope that you come out to the ball game and take advantage of this. And when you're in Lowell, now you've been yes. you've been cycling through. Yes. You get the other. That's right. So usually uh, every two weeks. Every two weeks, he stands out in front. Yes. Right. You greet fans. I do. You should come in, say hello uh, to the uh, to that to David Helen, also his family, his wife June, uh, son Dylan, who's eight, and yeah, uh, Cade. Cade, who's five, yeah. and uh, introduce yourself. So, and you can find Cade usually working the dunk tank. <laughs> Cade loves to sit up there in the dunk tank and taunt little boys and girls. He he sits up there, this little five-year-old sits up in the dunk tank and yells, Missed, missed, you never been kissed. <laughs> and, and the boys get really mad and they start throwing more balls at him. They want to sink that little kid into the into the into the drink and it's fun. It's really a lot Unbelievable. of fun. Well, David, I want to thank you very much for being such a gracious host and giving us this tour. And I hope this is the start of a great relationship with the city of Lowell. And I hope you and your family just enjoy Lowell as much as I have as a resident of Lowell. Well, thank you very much. Jim, thank you. We love Lowell and we've enjoyed every minute of it so far. And we're looking forward to many, many years here. My, my goal, Jim, is I have two boys. They're eight and five years old. And I hope one day to pass the spinners on to them and have them take the spinners even further than what, where we will have taken them. Well, that's a great great thought, great but legacy. In, in, in the interim, to say thank you to you for coming, we have, mm -hmm. uh, we have caps here on sale. Caps are typically $27. They're on sale for all caps for $15. Our on-field hats, the red hats and the, gray, and the gray hats, are all $15. And we'd like to give you this spinner's cap. That is very gracious. That's your size, you can put it on. Uh, to all my readers, you know, I can't accept gifts, you know, uh, but uh, I don't know. You never know. It's always the start of a new day. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jim. Nice to see you.